Well, time to talk a little politics because the you know, November election is less than two months away. And here to talk about how her re-election campaign is going, as well as some county matters, we have County Supervisor Kristen Gaspar representing District 3 and really all of the county. Good morning, Kristen. Nice to see you. Good morning, Liz. It's great to be here. Yeah. So before we get into, you know, the upcoming election and kind of do a, a check-in status with you about your campaign, we just came out of this story with Ed Lunderman. You know. Uh, you've been keeping track with what's happening with San Diego State. They're about to get that stay-at-home order lifted. Remind us and tell us about this letter that you just sent Governor Newsom about what's happening. Sure. Well, San Diego State has now 621 confirmed coronavirus cases among its student population. Keep in mind, San Diego State hasn't been open for classes per se, but the dorms and the frat houses have been open. The kids are living there. Hey, look, college kids are social. We've seen this uptick in cases. The governor's metrics to stay open for San Diego are really strict, and we're seeing this now. With the cases at piling on from SDSU, it threatens or jeopardizes uh, our entire local economy. This is where I've written a letter to the governor specifically asking for special consideration to be given for these university cases. While they are an example of how pervasive coronavirus might be in our community still today, it's also important to note that we've learned a lot about this virus over the last six months, specifically the age groups, the demographics that are getting, getting hit hardest and translating into hospitalized cases. It's unlikely that many of these cases will translate into hospitalized cases. If you'll remember back, the main goal is to make sure we don't overwhelm our healthcare system. So specifically, I'm saying, hey, Governor, take a look at what's happening with San Diego State. Do not shut down our entire San Diego economy because of what's happened. We're managing the situation extremely well. We have the full cooperation of the students, the administration, the county has quickly mobilized teams on campus, testing sites, you name it. We've got it under control, but a third ch shutdown could happen mm. as a result. Yeah, and uh, how optimistic are you that you'll get a response from the governor or his staff? Well, we're, we're giving it a big push. You know, it's not only me. This week, our public health officer will be reinforcing this message to the governor. You're looking at our clinical leadership team. I'm calling on the support of other elected leaders in this county to really help back me up on this one. And so we'll be really working hard and aggressively because by tomorrow, we could see the county's metrics slip above the 6.9 case rate. That puts us in that evaluation window, a place that we didn't want to be. And we could see, you know, businesses start shutting down in the next couple of weeks. So we got to do everything that we can to stop this from happening. And just to tell the governor, look, all of our counties are unique. Our data is very specific. We've learned so much about how to protect the health and safety of our residents. It's time to let us take the lead here. We know how to manage this situation. You know, if the situation gets worse and we enter into that purple tier, um, I want to ask you, as county supervisor, would you be willing to support the idea of not enforcing businesses uh, who are, decide to stay open or decide to uh, defy the health order? Uh, and the reason I'm asking is, as you know, your colleague, uh, Supervisor Desmond tomorrow told us that he is going to be discussing and bring up the conversation to for the county to take local control. That's right. You know, people say all the time, just take the local control back. And I would love to take our local control back. I'm a small business owner and I've been impacted by this pandemic like many of our businesses have. But we have to go into this with eyes wide open. We have to understand the consequences at hand. Some people are calling it extortion. Call it what you like. But here's the deal. If we decide to go down this path, we have to do so knowing that we will have to turn our CARES Act funding back in. That's about $115 million expenditure by the county. I'm not sure where we're going to come up with $115 million considering we've distributed that. The governor's laid down his threats to the business community. If you defy these orders, then we will pull your liquor licenses, for example. If you're a restaurant, if you're a hair salon, we'll pull your cosmetology licenses. These are threats that have been laid down. I think we have to take those seriously. I've done everything that I possibly can before we go down that path. 
path to try to form a coalition of other elected leaders up and down the state of California, other counties that want to go back collectively and say to this governor, you need to give us our local control back because we don't want to have to take it back from you. But at this point in time, we're becoming pretty desperate. The situation is pretty dire for our citizenry that's been really hit hard. And with a million people in our safety net programs, almost a million people without food, we have to start evaluating every available option and taking all options seriously, but do it with eyes wide open mm -hmm. and understand the potential consequences of those actions. I believe we're less than 50 days away from the election. How are you feeling? I mean, obviously, um, I'm sure you're pretty, you know, you, you have a lot of energy, but you've been working nonstop, especially during this pandemic, coming up with ideas. Yeah, Liz, and speaking. I don't want to run during a pandemic again. Yeah. I can tell you that. How are you feeling that, overall, though, about things, your campaign? Yeah, things are shaping up really well. Uh, what I want San Diegans to know and understand, my opponent, Tara Lawson Reamer, is one of the most radical candidates to ever seek office in San Diego County. And this is all the wrong timing for a radical candidate like Tara Lawson Reamer. Uh, for example, this individual has left her job with George Soros to come and work here in San Diego. Uh, the labor unions have brought Tara Lawson Reamer to San Diego County specifically. She's a paid consultant. Uh, she's benefited financially for working for SEIU. San Diego can't afford to have labor in control of the Board of Supervisors, diverting necessary money from health care, public safety, mental health. Not at this time, not after all of the economic damage of this pandemic. Uh, she does have a colorful history running as an economist, but she's a radical activist with an arrest record for many radical moves, including rappelling down a building in a protest, injuring a police <clears throat> officer. These mm -hmm. are the types of things that we can't afford for San Diego. Uh, George Soros style of police reform, for example, would include the release of nonviolent felons back into our community, uh, dropping or non-enforcement of drug, drug charges. You've seen the illegal drugs pouring across into San Diego. Uh, this is all the wrong time for Tara Lawson Reamer to take over control, for our labor unions to take over control of the Board of Supervisors. And I'm going to fight with every last fiber of my being to make sure that you have servant leaders in control of the Board of Supervisors making these critical decisions as we recover from this pandemic and all the challenges that we had pre-pandemic here in San Diego. County Supervisor Kristen Gaspar, thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Quick check 